So, surely throughout your life you've come in contact with leukemia prior to nursing school. So you probably have a basic understanding of what leukemia is, so let's just dive into it a little bit more and get a better understanding of what's going on here. So what happens with leukemia is we have a proliferation of abnormal, undeveloped white blood cells. So what do white blood cells do? Well, white blood cells help in fighting infection, of course, right? So we have multiple different kinds of white blood cells, but white blood cells as a whole play a role in infection fighting that infection, preventing infection, etc. So what happens with leukemia is these, these white blood cells are abnormal, they're undeveloped, or we are unable to produce white blood cells. So the patient becomes very prone to infection. Minor infections can, can lead to uh, severe, severe infections and death. Um, they're unable to clot their blood, and they just become very sick individuals, okay? Now these are diagnosed by blood test and bone marrow biopsy. Why are they diagnosed by blood, bone marrow biopsy? Uh, here's our marrow within our bone, right? It's all spongy. Um, so white, white blood cells are produced uh, within, the, within the bone marrow, okay? So blood tests can definitely tell us, you know, we just get a regular blood test. We get a uh, total uh, account for blood cells, we get neutrophils, we get uh, leukocytes and everything, so we can, we can get a whole um, list of every white form of white blood cell within our body, um, and we can get a list of our total white blood cell count, okay? So there's a couple different types of uh, leukemia, and for the most part, they actually, it's it's kind of diagnosed, or it's they're named by what type of blood cell they're affecting, but for the most part, they actually, these different types of leukemia actually affect different age groups of individuals. So we have acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL, which normally affects children ages um, 2 to 4, okay? So it's acute lymphocytic, and then we have chronic lymphocytic, which is generally elderly individuals 50 to 70 years of age. Then we have acute myelogenous leukemia generally peaks at about 60 years of age, and then we have chronic myelogenous leukemia, which um, incidence increases with age. Okay, so the types, two types that are going to be uh, affected are going to be, we're going to have lymphocytic, and we're going to have myelogenous. Okay, and then with each of those, we're going to have acute versus chronic. Okay, so acute lymphocytic is going to be for younger children, um, versus chronic lymphocytic is going to be older, and then again uh, there with uh, myelogenous, okay? So what are our assessment findings going to be? Well, of course, we're going to see uh, the patient is going to be very um, at risk for uh, bleeding as well as infection, okay? So their lymph nodes are going to be swollen, and again with infection and things, we're going to see enlargement of our spleen. We're going to see uh, the bruising and purplish patches and spots all over the skin. So if you've ever taken care of a... a leukemic patient, you'll notice that they do have this just, their their entire skin almost ends up becoming a bruise, okay? Uh, if you ever have to start an IV on a, on a, on a patient with leukemia that's progressed, uh, you'll know it's very, very hard to do because the entire skin is uh, purple and bruised and bleeding, okay? You'll also notice uh, they're going to be short of breath, they're going to have frequent fevers, frequent infections, they're going to have weight loss. Um, they're going to have a tremendous amount of weakness, and they're going to have a lot of pain, okay? So these leukemic patients are very sick. Uh, it's very uh, hard to take care of these patients because you, you feel terrible for them.